entitled Karen crashes a train so her son can blow the whistle. My dad is friends with a train engineer. He was always super nice to me and my family, and he told us this insane story. As everyone knows, trains can't stop on a dime. But what you really need to know about is wheel slips. Sometimes trains will fail to start or stop and slide across the track because the wheels lose traction. If a train goes into a wheel slip while stopping, it's extremely difficult to stop. Wheel slips are usually caused by weight distribution or not being able to gain traction. If a train has too much weight, it can go into a wheel slip easily, so the people who load the train need to make sure that it has just the right amount of weight distribution. So, on to the story. Let's call my dad's friend Tom. Tom was on his normal route, and in the conductor seat was someone we will call Bill. Tom was going around 70 miles per hour and was about to come up on a crossing. In the distance, you could see a car on the crossing. He thought that the arms hadn't gone down yet and that cars were still crossing, as it was still a ways away. As he got closer, he realized that the car was parked. A woman and a kid were standing beside it on the tracks, holding up a sign that Tom couldn't read. But he immediately knew this was bad. He slammed on the emergency brakes and blew the horn as loud as he could to try and warn the woman. As he got closer and closer, she wouldn't budge. But then the train went into an unexpected wheel slip. I'll explain why soon. Now they were sliding at a high velocity and heading straight towards the mom and presumably her son. Bill and Tom were panicking, letting trains nearby know what was going on. People who saw what happened were yelling at the woman and her kid. As the train approached, people who could see her sign realized she wasn't going to budge. People ran and pushed her out of the way. Then a few moments later, Tom and Bill slammed into the car since they were in a wheel slip and couldn't slow down. Luckily, after a bit, Bill and Tom managed to gain traction again and stopped about 2.5 miles later. Bill and Tom were scared witless about the mom and the kid. So despite their protocol, they jumped out of the engine and ran to see if she and her kid were okay. They knew the mom and kid would still be there because the police would need to ask questions. After what Tom said seemed like forever, they finally made it back to the crossing. They found the mom and the kid, but she wasn't there because she was stuck. She was protesting. The entitled mom then proceeded with conversation. Finally, she said, now I want you to meet my son. He wants a ride in your train. What? Tom asked, a bit confused. I want to be a train driver, said the kid. Can I go pull the horn? Sorry, kid, no, Tom said. We can't allow that. Let him do it, said the entitled mother. He's just curious. Besides, you owe us one since you tried to splatter us. Tom was definitely confused at that point. But before Entitled Mom could continue with her wild accusations, Bill told Tom to read what it said on her sign. It said, Stop crashing into cars because you're too lazy to stop and you enjoy the fun of demolition. Embrace the new generation. Tom was bewildered. He asked Karen just what she was trying to say. The whole thing about trains can't stop on a dime is an old wives' tale. Admit it, she said. You don't stop because you enjoy crashing into cars. What? No said Tom. We don't stop because we can't stop. It's the wait. She cut him off. I've heard it all before, and I'm tired of being lied to. Okay, said Tom, but it's not a lie. Besides, a crash like this creates a huge inconvenience for our schedule, as we have to try to work around it. We don't do it for fun. And what do you mean by embrace the new generation? This is where Karen really took off. I've tried to stop so many trains time and time again because my boy wants to be able to blow the horn and see what the inside looks like. He wants to be a train driver when he grows up too. You guys are so lazy. You just wave. Too selfish to let the new generation be excited to become a train driver. You guys are so selfish. Ma'am, said Tom firmly, if we could, we would. I've wanted to let a kid inside the cab for so long, but you must understand that everyone is on a tight schedule. Stopping can put a lot of people in danger, because if we aren't in a siding at a specific time, it can delay schedules and trains can accidentally be let onto the line you're on. It can cause a head-on collision. Oh, shut up, said Karen. You guys aren't on a tight schedule. I've been waiting here almost all day, and it took forever to see a train. We got so bored and we needed to find things to do. You know how many people I had to tell off? I got so many questions about why I was there. I said I was just putting coins on the track. Each time someone came by, I had to look busy. So we put a lot of coins on there. Oh, she had a thought. 
I need to go check them and see how they turned out. Tom's and Bill's faces grew red with anger. You did what? Tom asked. Me and my son put coins on the track, Karen said. Is there a problem? He tried to ask how many, but she had lost count. Tom was furious. He realized why he went into the unexpected wheel slip. There were so many coins, and he was traveling so fast that the train lost traction. So they went into a wheel slip that put many lives in danger. Tom screamed and yelled at the woman, asking how she could be so stupid. When the police came, he told the officers what happened, and she was charged for trespassing. Turns out she committed a felony by causing her car to get hit on purpose. So Karen had a lot of bills to pay and spent just a small time in the slammer. And of course, her entitled kid didn't get what he wanted. It's hard to even comment on this story because it's terrifying that even the most reckless of Karens would deliberately put her car, her son, and her own life in danger. I will say that it seems a little unfair for the original poster to refer to the kid as entitled. This small child has been taught by his mother that trains aren't dangerous. He's definitely a victim here, and he nearly lost his life to his mother's ignorance and neglect. Since she seems pretty unwilling to learn her lesson, it probably won't be the last time something like that happens. I won't come down too hard on her for putting the coins down, though. I won't say I've ever put a bunch of pennies on the railroad tracks, but I will say I'll think twice before doing it again. Angry Grandma Casts Me Out of Heaven Over a Water Slide I'm a teenager working at my city pool. I switched over there temporarily because the city-run field that I work at has no reservations, so I moved to a pool to earn money. I've only been working at the pool for a week, but I know the city rules and we don't allow really young kids down the water slide. It's a really good way for young kids under 4 feet tall to get injured, and the water below is only 3 feet and 6 inches deep. Another co-worker of mine decided to ignore the rules and let anyone go. They also let many people go at once, another thing that could end up with someone being injured. Me and my co-worker exchange places every 30 minutes to avoid sunburn and whatnot, so I don't know exactly what he does up there during his time. The story starts off with three kids going down the slide. These kids have been causing trouble all day, so I give them a 10-minute timeout from the slide. After that, I see a really small child who could clearly get injured going down the slide. I tell her she sadly needs to go to the bottom using the stairs. Two minutes later, her grandmother appears and starts yelling at me. Grandma shouts, Why do you think you can talk to these kids like that? Mama, I said, I don't understand. You can't yell at kids, you SOB, she shouts. And my granddaughter deserves to go down that slide. No, Mama, I said, she can't. And they aren't my rules to dictate who can and cannot go down the slide. I'm only following the rules I was told. We paid to come here, she shouted. And she went down before. You're hot and confused. Please let her go. Well, I was hot, but not confused. I said, Mama, I feel fine, and I'm not confused. Now, like I said before, she can't go. I was also clearly not yelling at any kids, but they have been causing problems all day. I'm only doing my job. No, you're not, she said. I've seen you yell at them for no reason, especially my granddaughter. You need God, and even then he will send you straight to the pit of fire. At this point, I'm annoyed and very angry, but trying to hide it. Mama, I said, please leave the slide. I repeated this like 20 times while she was yelling at me about some stupid religious stuff. Finally, she said what every angry customer loves to say at some point. Let me see your manager so I can get you fired. You belong in heck, you SOB. At this point, she leaves and gets my manager. But luckily, my manager takes my side and I'm not in trouble. She gave me a headache, but I don't have to deal with her again. And I think she got kicked out of the pool for the rest of the summer. The other coworker is mad at me because I was doing what I believed was right and making sure no one got hurt. So am I in the wrong? It's pretty obvious this OP is in the right, and it's also pretty obvious why the coworker is mad. When grandma went and complained that OP wouldn't let her kid down the slide, she basically outed the fact that the coworker had been letting kids break the rules. Safety protocols are no joke. That coworker almost definitely got reamed. The important moral here, though, is that it really doesn't matter if you think a rule is unfair or unnecessary. You don't pay entrance to a pool or any other place for the opportunity to do whatever you want. You pay on the condition that you'll follow their rules. And when it comes to safety, it's always best to assume those rules exist for a reason. 
Your child might love to go down a water slide, but she'll also enjoy living to see another day. Maybe Grandma should think about which of those is more important to her. Entitled Karen says, I hurt her child by not giving him food that had been in my mouth. I had to travel to a city six hours away for college-related work. The trip was pretty tight. I had to leave on Thursday night by train, reaching the city early on Friday morning. I was engaged in work until the evening and then had to take a train to get back home on Friday night. When I got into the train at about 10 p.m., I still hadn't had dinner. I was exhausted. I happened to share my cabin in the train with a middle-aged woman and her toddler. There was around 30 minutes left for the train to depart, so I went out of the train, quickly got some snacks and ice cream, and got back to the cabin. I decided to have the ice cream first because I didn't want it to melt. The toddler saw it and started asking for it. I just looked at the mom, and she goes, Give it to my son and buy yourself a new one. I was taken aback because she wasn't even requesting. She was demanding. I was way too exhausted to take any crap from anyone, old or young. I continued having the ice cream and told the woman, The shop is right there, and they have all flavors. The toddler starts crying loudly, so I plugged in my headphones. The mom started yelling at me and saying things like, You're a brat. You're heartless for doing this to a child. You're trying to make me miss the train. And other things I couldn't hear because I put the music on full volume. I did not feel guilty about finishing the ice cream in front of a crying toddler because I was really angry at the moment. I won't lie, I felt bad for the kid sometime later and thought of offering him some chips. But I didn't want to engage in any form of conversation with the mom. The remainder of the journey was in utter silence. I told my boyfriend about this after I came back home and he thinks it's hilarious. But my mom was not happy about this. She was more shocked than angry, because I've always been great with kids, and she couldn't believe that I would do that to a kid even if the mom was annoying. But I've been reaffirmed by strangers on the internet that I did nothing wrong. The best detail of this poster story is Karen's fear of missing the train. So she asked this girl to go get a new ice cream knowing she'd probably miss the train if she did. You have to love the hypocrisy. Not to mention the willingness to give her son ice cream that a stranger had already been licking. It's sweet that this OP felt bad for the kid, but it's probably good that she didn't give him any chips. This Karen is a lot like the Karen from the first story. Not just because they're both awful people when you put them anywhere near a train, but because they're both teaching their kids they should get whatever they want, even when it inconveniences others. This original poster had to deny the kid chips just to teach him a lesson that his mother has no interest in teaching him. Then again, maybe giving the kid a consolation prize wouldn't have been the end of the world. Would you have given him a snack? Leave a comment below about what you'd do if you were this OP. Karen tries to review bomb a theme park for not enabling her daughter's bullying. I work at a local amusement slash water park. It's a really fun job, and I enjoy it most of the time. I work in the arcade at the park, and it's always nice to see kids come up and pick their prizes. Our park offers a season pass, so we have many families who come here regularly. One of the groups that come here regularly is a group of six boys who are 13. These boys come almost every day. Very chill guys. They like to talk to me when I'm behind the counter sometimes. They tell me about their day, lives, etc. My co-workers also know them and love them. They're really sweet, and none of us have ever had an issue with them. About a week ago, the twin sister of one of the boys was invited to a birthday party for one of her friends. The boy was there with his friends as always. We quickly found out his sister isn't nearly as sweet as him. One of the boys in the group wears a boy's swimsuit that is from the 50s. He swims for his school and loves the water area of our park. Sometimes his friends will be in the arcade while he's still in the water area, but he still comes to the arcade every day. The boys came into the arcade, played a few games, and then started talking to me. They had mentioned how the boy's sister was teasing his friend for his vintage swimsuit, and one of the pool guys dealt with the issue. I didn't think much of it at the time, until a few hours later. I was on break and stopped in the bathroom to get lunch. When I was washing my hands and about to leave, I saw a boy who looked around 12 or 13 come into the bathroom crying. I stopped and asked him if everything was okay. He told me that the bullies from his school were there and making fun of him again. When I told him to talk to me about what was happening, he started telling me about the girls picking on him. I asked to see where they were. At this point, they had left the pool area. With the boys' help, I looked around the park for them until we found them at one of the games. I explained to my coworker who was operating the booth, and we got our manager. The boy was at the park with two friends, who told him they were going to get food. I brought him to my boss's office, he explained everything that happened, and I went to get my lunch. 
After I was done eating, I went back to the arcade. The group of boys came to me as soon as I got back and were telling me all about how this one boy's sister got in trouble and how the mother was called. I quickly realized one of the girls I had just seen was his sister. That night after my shift, I was calling one of my coworkers and he was telling me about how the mother of one of the girls came and went crazy, saying her daughter would never do such a thing and how her son came here all the time with no issues. She said that her daughter makes jokes sometimes and only tells the truth. She then went on about political correctness and Gen Z being soft and said a bunch of other rude stuff. My boss wasn't having any of it and asked her to leave and not to bring her daughter back. The other two girls were banned as well. The mother left bad reviews on Google and Yelp and had made a Facebook post in a local gossip group about what happened. She said her daughter was a target and how this boy was making a story up. She said that her children would never bully anyone and how she's a great mom. She told parents not to bring their children to our park. The brother of the girl has come back, though. He said his mother told him, You can go to that crappy place, but don't expect me to give you money again. Luckily, the other boys had him covered. And with the approval of my manager, we gave him a massive discount so his friends wouldn't have to pay too much. Putting aside how unfair it is to all the other well-behaved children in the park that these specific boys get a massive discount, it's at least nice that the theme park banned the kids who couldn't behave themselves. And you've really got to love Karen claiming that her daughter was innocent, only to then turn around and basically admit her guilt by trying to justify what she did. Karen even low-key bullied the kid herself by claiming that everything her daughter said was true. You have to wonder how Karen would react if the roles were reversed. If the boys had made her daughter cry, would it all just be a joke? Would she still think the whole issue was that Gen Z is soft? They are, but that doesn't excuse her daughter's behavior. Hopefully, watching her brother come home from the theme park she's banned from will teach that girl there are consequences for her actions. It probably won't, but I can dream. Click one of the videos on screen right now.